happy Tuesday. So today I have an unpleasant errand to run this morning. Um, if you watched previous videos, we just bought the new car on Thursday. So I drove it home from the dealer Thursday night, got it back out of the garage Friday morning to go to Walmart, and back home again, and then we took it Friday night to wash it and came right back home with it. And then Mike spent Friday night, sorry, I'm all over the place with the camera. Um, Mike spent Friday night and pretty much all day Saturday. Uh, he is never satisfied with how people take care of the paint on cars when he buys them. So he buffed and polished the whole thing and put sealant on the paint. Um, and then he went to do the windows, and he likes to re the windows, and there is faint etching on the windshield on the passenger side, which would be, I guess, why I didn't notice it when I was driving it. Um, we haven't been in the car together yet, although we were in the car together to go to the car wash Friday night, and he didn't notice it then, but he noticed it when he was cleaning it up. Like, it's just... I'm gonna when when I leave this morning I'll turn the camera on see if you can see it. It is kinda difficult to see from the outside of the car, but when you're sitting in the car looking out, you'll notice it. And if it's like the sun's shining bright, it's probably gonna mess with you a little bit in the passenger seat. So he called the sales manager from the dealership yesterday, told him he was very unhappy with this. Um, he's tried multiple things to get this off. Um, he even called some auto glass places in the area. We live in like, I hate to be so negative about where we live, but there's not a lot of money here. People don't give a shit about stuff here. <laughs> um, so even the businesses are like, oh, if you can't get it off, we can't get it off. That's exactly what some guy told him from an auto glass place. Well, the stuff you're using ain't taking it off. We ain't got nothing. Really? Anyway, um, he called the sales manager, told him all this, and of course the sales manager from the dealership wants to see the car. Hi, Dee. Yeah, I know. You're upset for the leave. So I'm driving it back over there this morning. We don't want a new windshield. Um, once you start replacing windshields, if any of you have had them done before, you know how it is. When a windshield is installed from factory, it's good. Once you start replacing windshields and you've got old adhesives that you're working with, Nothing ever goes back. It it it's you're you're weakening the integrity of the the strength of the car when you start fricking with your windshield. So he does not want a new windshield put in. He wants either somebody who is extremely knowledgeable about glass to buff this out, or he wants another car. I don't want to go through this again. I don't want to go through this again. I just want it to be taken care of. So, we'll see what happens. So that's my unpleasant errand this morning. Then tonight, trying another new recipe. Um, I'm going to be making, it's called herbs, tomato, and orzo salad. Now, I'm not a huge fan of orzo, but I've only tried it one time, and that's in this Hawaiian salad, I think it was called, which was more of a dessert type salad. Like, it had marshmallows and pineapples and cherries and stuff in it. And I just didn't care for the texture in that type of salad. Well, this salad is herbs and tomatoes. The orzo, the tomatoes, and then olive oil, thyme, lemon rind, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. So pretty easy. So I'm thinking this is more like a traditional pasta salad. So I'm going to try this. Um, again, another one of those recipes that turned out. I think there's a date on that page. No, there's not. Another one of those recipes, recipes that I printed out um, probably years ago and have never tried, but I have all these tomatoes that the neighbor gave me, and since we're leaving Friday morning to go away for the weekend, I need to use some of these tomatoes up. And this recipe even calls for grape tomatoes. Well, I have like a handful of yellow grape tomatoes left that I'm going to use, but I'm going to add some of these regular red tomatoes and just chop them up fine. Otherwise, I'm just going to be eating tomatoes, like two tomatoes a day, literally two tomatoes a day the rest of the week, because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tomatoes left. It's already Tuesday, and we leave Friday. So, 
that's what the plan what the plan is for today. So um, yeah, I'll take you to the garage now. See if we can see this windshield together, and um, come back. I don't think there's any way you guys are going to be able to see that through the camera lens because you have to kind of hold your head at an angle just to see it with the naked eye. Let me see if I can see it from the inside. In the garage it's probably not visible. No. You can't see it through the camera but trust me it's there. Hey so I'm back from the dealer so bottom line is we have to have a new windshield not what I wanted. Um, he said it's a factory defect. He explained the whole thing of how they put two panes of glass together with some safety something on the inside of two panes. It's heated up, blah, 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 blah. I'm not into the technical stuff, but it looks like moisture got down in there, and that's what that is. You can actually feel the ripple on the glass if you feel hard enough. So they have to get approval from Mazda to replace it since it is, um, it does have over 100 miles on it already, but we just picked it up Thursday and um, when we test drove it on Thursday it already had 71 on it. So they have to get approval from Mazda to replace it and then I'm going to have to go back over to the dealer and get it replaced. Um, and they promised me a loaner um, because obviously you can't replace the windshield in a half hour while I sit there and wait. So that's where we're at with the car. And it's almost lunchtime, and I've had no food at all this morning. All I've had was my tea, so I'm going to eat some lunch and sit on my butt for a little. Yeah. Okay, welcome back. I am getting ready to start my chicken cordon bleu that I'm making for dinner tonight. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start smashing my chicken breast. I was only going to make two, but when I pulled out my pack of chicken breasts out of the freezer from Costco, there was actually three in that pack. So I'm going to be making three instead since it's already thawed out, but we'll have leftovers and that's just fine. So let me find my meat mallet. So I'm just going to start pounding these. I'm going to don't see that on a plate, Michelle. You want to break your plate? I'm just going to start pounding these till they're nice and flat. I have three of them to do. So I'll be back once they're all flat. Okay, so my chicken breasts are flattened, so now what I'm going to do is add my pepper and my ham and my cheese. So I have three flattened pieces here, so start with the first one, that's, oops, alright Michelle. Add some pepper, and some ham, and a slice of cheese, and we're just going to roll that up. Some pepper, ham, and cheese, and you're rolling from the shortest side. Oh, this is a big one. And last one, pepper. I'm not adding salt just because of the salt content in the ham, and Swiss cheese um, has salt in it too, so I'm going to hold off on the salt. And then if we need a little bit at the table, we can add it there. Alright, so I have them all rolled up. So let me wash my hands, and I'm going to move the camera, and we'll go to the next step. Okay, so now we're going to take each piece of chicken. We're going to roll it just in some egg, and then in some breadcrumbs. Easier said than done. I don't want to try to fall apart. Just kind of hold it together. And then we're going to put it on a baking sheet, steam side down, that's been sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray. So, again, just roll this in an egg. And I have just one egg in there. I probably have a cup, a little over, a little over a cup maybe, of breadcrumbs. And on the baking sheet, seam side down. And the last one. Boy, these are big. Oof. It's amazing how big a little chicken breast becomes when you flatten it out. And in the breadcrumbs. 
Boy, that's just enough. I'm telling you. Wow. Okay. And then they're going in a 425 degree oven for about 45 minutes. So let me raise my hands. I'm going to turn the camera off and then we're going to get started on the tomato ortho salad. Okay, for the herbed tomato and orzo salad, I have, um, you can't see it, but right over here on my stove, I have some water coming to a boil, and I have measured out here a half a cup of dry orzo. Recipe says to make it according to package directions, except no oil and no salt, just going to cook the pasta plain. In the meantime, we need a cup of quartered grape tomatoes. Um, this is all I have left of grape tomatoes, so I'm going to use these up and then I'm going to cut up a regular tomato. So as not to bore you, I will turn the camera off while I'm doing this and I'll get back to you. Okay, my pasta is boiling, so that's still I'm going to be left to go for about eight or nine minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to get my dressing ready. So I need some lemon zest. Get my zester out. See, I should use a bigger thing because I'm just going to make a mess. Of it. So the teaspoon. Pretty close to a teaspoon here. Let's just scrape the rest of that off. Pick up what I threw all over the counter. Thank goodness I constantly wipe my counters off. All right. And then we want a teaspoon of the lemon juice. I'm just going to squeeze this in my hand so I don't have seeds in there. And I got a seed in there I got to pick out. And just a little more. That's good. That's definitely more than a teaspoon, but that's okay. Let me get this seed out of here that I got in here. All right, Michelle. Oh my goodness. It's like trying to catch a fish. Okay. And then we need some thyme. You know what? I'm just going to use the rest of this. It says a teaspoon of fresh, which is about a half a teaspoon of dried, and that's about all I got left. So that needs to go on my grocery list. And a quarter teaspoon of salt, which is about what's in here. I got to fill my salt shaker. Eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. See how much I measure? <laughs> and about two teaspoons of olive oil. So we're just going to guess at that, and since I used extra lemon juice, we're going to use extra olive oil. And let's give that a little stir. Alright, and then I'll be back when the pasta's done. Okay, I've rinsed my pasta with cold water and left it drain. So I'm just going to add it to my tomatoes. Note to self left next time, use a finer strainer because I lost some of my pasta in the sink. It went through all these little holes. Not too bright, Michelle, not too bright. And we're going to add the dressing. And we're going to stir this together. Looks a little strange to me. We'll have to see at dinner time if I like it. The recipe says serve room temperature or chilled. 
I'm going to taste it. If my pasta is still kind of warm, I'm going to pop it in the fridge till dinner's ready. All right, so let's give this a taste. Mm. Not bad. It's actually pretty good. The lemon definitely makes it a very light, refreshing dish. I think I'm going to pop it in the fridge, though, just until we eat, which is probably only about 20 minutes from now. But, yeah, this may be a keeper. I'll let you know. Okay, what's your honest opinion on the tomato and orzo salad? Oh, here's your mouthful. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> How's your din din? How's your din din? Pretty good. It's like eating little maggots. Maggots. So, is it a keeper or should I forget this one? No, you can keep it. It's pretty good. Okay, so there you have it. It's a keeper. Good morning and happy Wednesday. Just already had my tea. So now it's a little bacon, tomato, and mayonnaise English muffin for breakfast. Hey everyone! So my plans for the day changed last minute again, but just fine! One of the reasons I love summer is because I love to get outside whenever possible. And my friend Stacy said, let's come swimming again. I said, okay. So I was actually out running errands. So I cut my errand running short and ran home, threw my stuff in the house, changed my clothes. It's 2.30 and I'm on my way to Winterstown to go swimming again. So, yeah, again, I just don't want summer to end because I love the summertime. Oh shit, wrong way. Oh sorry, now I'm swearing. Oh lord, have mercy. Ugh. People are cutting my lane short. Oh my god. Okay. I need a pool.